thing that first appealed to me was the DC-8. The student airborne research experience came up, which I thought would be very beneficial. Well, first of all, it was NASA. I was excited about that, and also the, um, the airborne research aspect of it was really a big drop. I really liked the idea of flying in an airplane and just the idea of end-to-end -end data collection. It's every single part of a research experience uh, that I could imagine. It's, it's very much the most real research I feel like I've ever been a part of. SARP was created to train and inspire the next generation of Earth system scientists and engineers. There are 29 students in this year's SARP. They were competitively selected from universities all over the United States. We have a representation of 28 universities. We give students this amazing opportunity to fly on the NASA DC-8, one of NASA's airborne laboratories, collect their own data, do an actual research project with that data, and then present their results. Bromodichloromethane. The SARP program is divided into three research projects. The ocean group, the land group, and the air group. The students collected data from two different instruments on board the DC-8. They used the master instrument to collect remote sensing data over the giant kelp beds on the Santa Barbara Channel, as well as in the orchards over the San Joaquin Valley. The second instrument they used was the whole air sampler to collect air samples over dairies in the California Central Valley as well as wastewater treatment plants in the Los Angeles Basin. I am a first year graduate student studying meteorology and I'm a part of the air group and my research in particular for this project was on pollution transport in the LA Basin. There's 10 of us in the air group and whole air sampling is usually a two, a two man job. Well we all kind of being ambitious we're like well we can we can bake this better. So we each had our own task. So there's 10 people working together. We did something kind of new where we, we did a missed approach over LAX. So we had really high frequency samples going into LA and coming out. So we got a really good vertical profile of the um, air quality in, over LA. And I mean, when it was done, it was really a, uh, a, a very interesting um, reaction. Uh, they all were happy and they had a group hug and, and I think from that, that time on they really felt part of a, of a team. And it's also exciting to see these students develop from their pure scientific discipline background into a more interdisciplinary background and how they feed off of each other and their ideas and one student's a chemist, one's a physicist and so how they've been building their project. We really try to get the students to tell us you know, what do they want to work on and so we give them some ideas and then they just kind of run with it. And the idea is that by the end of their, their project, uh, they've got something that they've moved way beyond anything that we can do. I double majored in chemistry and physics, but I specifically picked the ocean projects and atmospheric directions so that I could learn more about the computer programming and the software skills. And uh, what I really liked is because besides being on the airplane, taking the data from the airplane, we went out into the field in Santa Barbara Channel on the boat, and we took measurements from the boat with different instruments. Getting out actually out on the water and seeing big schools of dolphin right next to the kelp bed and just driving right through the kelp and dripping my instrument in and figuring out and comparing that data and actually finding good correlations between the field data and the actual data that I took up from the DC-8 and creating a project that's uniquely my own and I'm applying all this stuff to it that I've learned here and with all this image analysis, it's completely my own project. I work a lot with remote sensing data but you never get to actually hold the instrument and talk to the people who work on the instrument and see the instrument and fly with it and then use the data that you've collected. Getting that kind of experience with airborne science introduces a new level of interacting with the data and getting to really pick certain locations and work with different groups. What's exciting about SARP is that maybe people who were in universities or colleges that they didn't have these large research programs because a lot of times these research programs are in big universities they get to see and realize that they have these skills already and this way of thinking that can be applied to a more diverse set of scientific questions so i think for a lot of these students especially the ones majoring in math or physics earth science was not a career that had really occurred to them before this program being from a small or large college i don't have this kind of opportunity to participate in research like this i've never really had I had a prior background in earth system science before. I haven't used many of these computer programs before, but I was able to apply my physics and math background to a real world application. It's definitely also made me consider earth system science as a future possibility for, for my career path, so it's not something I'd ever considered before and it, it opened that door to me. It's definitely in 
ensured that I want to go through a, a PhD program and do research. Um, I mean, it was something that I, I figured I always wanted to do, but now that I've gotten the experience of it, I know for sure, like, I love this. I, I, I want to keep doing more research. I loved working with so many different people in this program. Uh, there are people from all different schools. There are people from all different states. And there are a lot of different backgrounds brought together. There are people working on physics and astronomy. And I definitely learned a lot from working with kind of different branches of science. I've never really seen any program that offers all three stages of the whole, I guess, scientific experiment. Collecting the data, analyzing it, and then presenting it. And there's so many little details that go into gathering data that people might think is just, oh, we go out, we fly on a plane, you grab stuff. It's not that easy. There's a lot of flight planning involved, a lot of um, small details, but, and you, you learn a little bit of everything. It's a very broad experience. You come away with a, a, a broader perspective on science.